For this example, suppose a textbook dealer is offering a 15% discount on books purchased a month before the semester begins. Or I'll say that this is kind of a fantasy of mine because it would really encourage everyone to get their books early and you'd be able to save money. It's probably not going to happen though. If the books normally retail for $625, how much would you save with the discount and how much would you be spending overall? So again, it's a really simple application of that formula we saw in the last one. Here, I'm not going to put the subscript in there because we're only looking at one value A. This is 15% times $625, which by the way, I looked that up and that's the national average for students at four-year universities, which seems really high to me. And I'm sorry if that's what you're paying. It's a bit ridiculous. Anyway, this will convert to a decimal, still multiplied by that 625. So we will end up getting a discount of $93.75. And because our discount is $93.75, the actual value that you'd end up paying would be that 625 minus 93.75, and I forgot the dollar sign right there, but that's okay. I can fit it into that tiny little bit of space, even though it looks silly. But here we would end up paying, or you would end up paying anyway. I don't pay for textbooks anymore, not for my classes, at least. We would end up paying $531.25, albeit before tax. So I hope you're in Florida for that and not Alabama, for example because that's still quite a lot of money, quite a bit more than probably should be paying, but that's, that, that's life, I guess. Anyway, the next thing we're gonna look at is a way that we can reframe the ideas of percentages, of percentages from discounts and taxation in terms of things called percent increase and percent decrease.